Okay, all right, now being um, 6 p.m., I'll call the September 29th meeting of Old Colony Planning Council to order. Uh, first item of um, business is, uh, this meeting is accessible to people with disabilities. Microphones or telephones will be used by all speakers. Large print materials are available upon request. If you'd like either of these accommodations, please contact Mary Waldron at 508-583-1833, extension 202. And the notice of non-discrimination rights and protections to beneficiaries with regard to Title VI non-discrimination protections in the state non-discrimination protections is posted in this meeting room and is available on the Old Colony Planning Council website. Please contact Mary Waldron at 508 583 1833 extension 202 for more information. All right, so let's um, do a roll call. Um, Mary, did you want to do it or Sandy, are you going to do the roll call? I'm all set to do it. I can do okay. it. All right. Okay, Abington. Delegate present. Avon. Delegate. Bridgewater present. Uh, Delegate Brockton. Present. Okay, uh, present. Uh, Duxbury is vacant. East Bridgewater. Might be late. Okay. Easton. Might be late. Halifax vacant. Hanover vacant. Hanson. Scheduled to be, but not here. Okay. Kingston. Scheduled nope. to be, but not here. Pembroke. Okay. Plymouth. Delegate. Plimpton. Delegate. Stoughton. Not available. Uh, West Bridgewater. Eldon's in the hospital. Oh, that's right. Uh, Fred isn't. No, Fred's here. Okay. Fred. And uh, Whitman. Oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> I wonder if they still think it's seven o'clock. Okay, well, maybe they'll they'll uh, come on as we're wrapping things up. <laughs> All right, so the next item is uh, the consent agenda, which has the uh, minutes from July 28th. Mary, in her email, had um, requested that the environmental notifications be included on the consent agenda, but they weren't actually printed on the, um, the agenda. So I just, uh, if there's anyone who would, um, who does not want to include the environmental notifications or would even has one that they would like to, um, to discuss. Uh, if you could uh, let me know. Um, so if there's any, anyone that wants to discuss any of the environmental notifications or um, would, um, would like to have one removed or any removed, can you let me know? Sure, thank you. Oh. Okay, so um, so with that, no comments. We'll move all of the environmental notifications to the consent agenda as well. So I will um, entertain a motion to accept the uh, minutes from July 28th, 2021 and uh, the environmental notifications as printed in the, um, the packet. I'll make we a motion. Have, okay, motion, Sandra. Does anyone uh, second? Second. Second. Okay, second. Um, it was Frank and Sydney. So uh, roll call vote, Sandra, for acceptance of the items on the consent agenda, which is the minutes of July 28, 2021, and the environmental notifications. Okay, Abington. Accept. Avon. Accept. Bridgewater, accept. Brockton. Accept. Duxbury is vacant. East Bridgewater, not here. Easton, not here yet. Uh, Halifax, vacant. Hanover, vacant. Han Hanson, not here. Kingston, not here. Pembroke, okay. yeah, yeah, Plymouth. Delegate, accept. Plimpton, accept. Stoughton. Not here. Uh, West Bridgewater and Whitman. Great. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, so now moving on to the um, financial report. Um, Brenda, are you ready to uh, take the I lead? Am. I am. All right. I'll turn it over to you. 
Okay, so starting with the July financials, <clears throat> statement of expenditures report shows total expenses for the month of $163,917.06. Cash position report shows income for the month of $109,560.25. Disbursements for the month were $332,095, excuse me, and 68 cents. The total cash available at month's end was $1,566,857.94. OPEB had a gain of $19,102.90, bringing the ending balance in the OPEB account to $896,375.51. The budget resources report, total receipts for the month being $109,560.25, makes the total cumulative receipts for this fiscal so far $109,560.25. Moving down to the AAA report, I'm going to skip the July AAA report because of delays. I will go over the AAA report in for August, except to say that the Volunteer Transportation Program had a beginning balance in that fund of 186 thousand seven hundred thirty five dollars and twelve cents payments to volunteer drivers in July were a total of one thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and thirty nine cents and the volunteer transportation donations received in July were a total of twenty five dollars bringing the ending balance in the account at the end of July to one hundred eighty five thousand twenty two dollars and seventy three cents ROM a um, statement and activity for July Balance at the beginning of July was $183,925.46. July receipts were $5,850, making total ROM FY22 receipts in July of $5,850. July expenses were $11,006.59, making the total ROM expenses in FY22 in July $11,600.59. The ending balance in the ROM bank account in July was $177,255.50. The budget report, total FY22 expenditures through the end of July were a total of $160,788. Our percentage spent to date is at 7.18% the ideal percentage in the first month of the fiscal year is 8.33. So we are off to a good start. The last report all the way down are the July accounts payables all the way down. These are just the checks that went out, the payables that went out in July. Okay, moving on to the August financial report. <coughs> Excuse me. Statement of expenditures report shows total expenses for the month at $174,246.31. Cash position report shows income for the month of $181,331.68. Disbursements for the month were $483,855.82. Total cash available at month's end was $1,257,841.05. OPEB account had a gain in August of $7,986.12, bringing the ending balance in the OPEB account to $904,361.63. Budget resources report. Total receipts for the month being $181,331.68 brings the total cumulative receipts in FY22 in August to $290,882.86. Triple A report. Pass through total cumulative billing in August was $1,315,095. The remaining fund balances showing at this time are $1,584,844. Ombudsman and admin funds show cumulative billings at $244,015, bringing the total remaining balances at admin and ombuds to a total of $2,000,000. <clears throat> 
$270,347. The volunteer transportation account, the beginning balance in August was $185,022.73. Total payments to volunteers in August were $659.57. No donations received in August brings the fund ending balance to $184,363.16. Brenda, if I could just put a quick pause. We went over this at finance um, yesterday and I only highlight it just because we're talking about AAA um, and um, Brenda's already been addressing it, but the, um, the there's a few months that uh, we are due funds um, and Brenda's already been making some um, at least communication and inroads that we are becoming the top of the list to get um, um, those um, revenues. So Brenda, did you want to add just anything to that? Yeah, the, the AAA payments are always behind, usually by a month, maybe two months. Now they are three months behind and we've paid the sub grantees right up to date. And because it was the, you know, we were finishing up the fiscal year and moving forward, the, the payments that we sent out were, you know, were pretty large. So because they owe us three months of back pay, we're having a bit of a cash shortage. So I may have to transfer money out of our savings in order to cover payroll this month. I keep checking the account every single day and money just hasn't been coming in. But when we do get it in, it's going to be a large amount of money. <laughs> and that's that's from the executive office of elder affairs yes that's correct and i they they have put us at top of the priority they are well aware that that this has caused us a, a cash problem and that we're not going to send them any more payments until we get some money from them and so. for the members this, this will continue to be on the topic for the finance committee um for the next time that they meet yes okay moving on to the rom august bank statement and activity balance at the beginning of August was $177,255.50. August receipts were $58.50, bringing the total FY22 receipts to $11,700. August expenses were $9,682.39, bringing the total ROM expenses in FY22 to $20,688.98. The ending balance in the ROM bank account in August was $178,450.91. Moving down to the budget report, page one. Budget report on page one, total FY22 expenditures through the end of August is at $325,554. Our percentage rate in August is at 14.55. Ideal percentage in the second month of the fiscal year would be 16.66%. So again, we're, we're still do, doing well in month number two. Budget report page two, our income revenue has increased, our projected income revenue has increased by $130,000 due to new grants that have been added. These added grant funds plus the already proposed miscellaneous expense funds which has a current balance of $92,233 at the end of August, brings the projected incomes, income surplus at this time to $222,233. Um, lastly, the list of accounts payable for August 21. These are the checks that went out in August. <clears throat> and um, a brief audit report audit all of the documents. Um, the deadline is Friday. Um, I will have all the documents to him. I really only have one more thing to send, um, which will be to him by Friday. And we are scheduled for field work um, the week of November 8th. So that's, um, you know, when he comes and finishes up getting it, we, you know, we mesh together and make sure that everything is good to go. And then from there, the audit is officially begins to be put together. So that's my report. Thank you very much. Well done, Brenda. Um, any you. questions um, about either the July or August um, financial reports presented by Brenda? Can I ask a question, Chris? Sure, I absolutely, Frank. I understand AAA is shot, what, 800,000? Yes, a lot, a lot. 
Okay, and we're going. Are we going to have to take a deduction um, from the, a, a reduction from our bank account to pay our, our salaries? Correct. Yes, I we well we have a savings that's within the same Rockland account that's there for that very reason. I've never had to. We've had to borrow money out of it before prior to my coming on board. This is the okay. first time I will have had to to pull money out of it to cover our payables. Thank you, Brenda. I just want to make sure that uh, I know you said last night that you were working on getting that money. Yes. And, uh, I just want to make sure we're not going to get uh, short change because of uh, the slowness of the payment. That's all. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, in the, in, it's really supposed to go back and forth. We pay. We usually send them a payment, and then within the same month, they send us a payment back. Okay. Right now, they're just they're just behind. They've had so many extra funds. Um, going so there's a lot of confusion over there, but there you know we're at the at the top of the list for getting funds. So you know, like I said, we'll get we will get a large amount from them relatively soon. I'm certain. Thank you and thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Any more questions for Brenda? All right. Do um, is there a motion to accept the financial reports for July and August of 2021? I'll make that motion. Okay, motion. Um, Sandy, do we have a second? Second. Second, Sydney. Okay, Sandra, are you ready to do roll call vote for acceptance of the financial reports for July and August? I am. Abington? Accept. Avon? Accept. Water? Accept. Brockton? Accept. Duxbury? Vacant. East Bridgewater? Vacant or absent, Easton, absent, Halifax, vacant, Hanover, vacant, Hanson, not here, Kingston, Pembroke, except, thank you, uh, Plymouth, except, Plimpton, except, Stoughton, not here, West Bridgewater, and Whitman. Okay. Thank Great. You. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Okay, Mary, how about staff report? So I'll go through this quickly. There's a lot of lot of information, but I'm starting off with this beautiful smile. We have a new member of the OCPC family. His name is Ezekiel Romulus, um, the son of Elijah and Darlene Romulus. Um, it is, um, as you can see, this is the second time that we've had a onesie with our new logo. So we are uh, proud to, uh, to welcome Ezekiel um, and um, Elijah will be on paid family leave starting on Monday. So um, please join me in, in welcoming Ezekiel. You know, the, as you just saw the fiscal that Brenda talked about the audit, um, we are going to be hiring the assistant to assist both AAA and fiscal manager. And he is actually in the building. Um, we have Sean Noel, if you can just give a quick hello so the camera can go to you, Sean. Where are you in the... Uh, where am I? Keep, just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> um, my name is Sean Noel. Um, I have uh, graciously accepted the, uh, the position for the management assistant. I'm looking forward to working directly with David and, uh, and Brenda, and uh, I'm very excited to, to be here. Thank you, Sean. We're excited. We're excited. To come. Sean, Sean will be starting on October 12th. Very nice. Um, so that that is the piece um, next on the heels. It's does, it isn't said here, but the um, um, I am in the process of finishing up the job description for the assistant to me um, and to the office. So um, that will be a, a I, I, my shoulders will be dropping very shortly. So um, and you know appreciate all the members. But I wanted to go back to fiscal. So Brenda holds uh, monthly grants management meetings. Are really helpful for keeping the team and our our, our grant um, funders um, just in the same sink. We are exploring getting rid of the hard phones, which I don't have in my office, and we're going to be getting these soft phones through Teams. So we're exploring that. We're being pretty close to getting that completed. And just on communications, you saw that there was a newsletter that went out today. If you haven't seen it, we're doing a little bit something different. We're going to be taking different aspects of our region and highlighting. So this newsletter had 
breweries in our in our region. We're going to be talking about open space and parks and trails and bike paths. So if you have any ideas um, that you would like us to focus on, um, that's we're going to use the newsletter to say all the good news. So it's not just only an event. It really is tying the economic development piece to it, getting people to come to our communities and to expend their dollars. Um, so the newsletters continue to be a great resource. The website is a bit delayed because I we were we were in the middle of things and we had a bunch of funding that came to us. Um, we're hoping to have the new website um, by the end of the year, if not the first of the year. For um, for staff, for I mean for the staff for the council, um, you know we're trying all different things. And Dottie was a big resource to me to getting this package together for you today. Um, but we're going to probably send you a link that will have a Dropbox that will have all the documents in one place, so you don't have to get an email and be too clogging up your 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 email. So we're working on that to make it a much more streamlined um, process for the for the board members. We are in the process of working on um, staff retreat, kind of like an expo. We're looking at December. And um, um, so then we're gonna um, I'm working with the team and identifying a, a time frame. So it's gonna be more about talking about what we're doing, inviting town administrators and legislators, obviously the alt, you know, the alternates and delegates, and really just kind of celebrating all the work that we've been doing. So stand by for more information about that. Um, as you saw in my email, cultivating new council members to replace the vacancies. It really is a high priority for me and Christine and I have um, talked about different approaches to that. And then um, just lastly, it was presented at uh, some preliminary, very preliminary discussions. Um, we have hired Bob Moran, our former um, delegate from Brockton, and he as a consultant and he's working on taking the OPEB discussions and assessing and evaluating and will be coming um, hopefully for the October meeting um, with some recommendations, but it will definitely be this year in terms of whether we stay with Rockland Trust or go with the county, you know, or perhaps look at other all avenues. So Bob presented to finance meeting, we're going to still utilize the finance meeting as that venue. Um, so I really encourage, I will make sure everybody gets to be invited to the finance meetings so you can hear those discussions. Got some new other members. This is uh, uh, Gabrielle Sylvain Jean um, from the AAA. Um, she's the assisted living resident specialist. Um, she's been on at least a month and a half. She's been doing a great job. Um, and she has 64 sites within the region. So this is a um, Charlie Kilmer. <coughs> you have your hand raised, Charlie? Nope, somebody had their hand raised. Sorry. Um, and then I just wanted, as we go through this, I'm just going to do the highlights. So Norman Sorbman um, had retired and um, there was a wonderful celebration for him. We'll be talking about the AAA um, later on in today, but all these different kickoffs and very, you know, very much engaged, as you can see. Community Planning and Economic Development Department, Lori, Joanne, Dottie, Elijah, um, open space plans and um, hazard mitigation plans. The, the incredible 500 page reports that are being written on, on, on each of these is um, a lot of work, a lot of time engaging with our communities. Um, if you have not participated in one with your community, um, you really, it's um, the, the hard work and the, and the behind the scenes work that it's done on each of these. Um, housing production plan, of the town of Easton, an affordable housing trust. Um, kudos to Lori Muncy, that is a $20,000 grant um, a award that, um, that OCPC has been awarded. Um, and then um, as you can see, the green communities, competitive grant rounds and each of the communities that received the funding. Um, the REPA grant 2021, as you can see here, the communities in terms of um, where they are in terms of the grant application and annual report. Again, this is revenue that comes in to um, OCPC and, um, and the wonderful staff that works on that. That is a combination of Joanne Zygman, Elijah Romulus, um, Sean um, Bailey, and um, who am I missing? There's a whole, I think that's the team that has been doing that. Economic development, um, meeting with the town of Avon, discuss that water sewer infrastructure that's so related to economic development and on the line in terms of Duxbury. Um, oh, we have been meeting with communities on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, we have, um, we've had hands and uh, too many to go, but we're going down each of the 17 communities where we're gonna be meeting and identifying and 
taking the priorities and really strategizing how OCPC can be assistance. Sometimes it might be with both feet in the water and sometimes it might be that just that big toe and just be holding their hands. Um, but as you can see, there's one stop growth webinars and the SEDS committee um, that Joanne will touch upon in a little bit. Um, the economic recovery work that Dottie's been doing in terms of being on meetings and attending the different economic development council meetings and citizen planner. Um, she's got meetings in terms of there's all this new funding that's coming um, and both Dottie and Joanne work with Deborah Bevan, our EDA representative. I cannot underscore the appreciation that Deborah has has provided to this organization because of the two women that I've just names I've just mentioned. They are um, communication with Deb Bevan. Um, they've asked questions. They serve as a resource. Um, I, all I can say is that that the relationship has certainly grown. Um, looking at the build a better build back better the economic adjustment travel and tourism economic adjustment assistance and good jobs. These are all funding that are coming and hopefully that we can see additional um, um, funding come to this region. Um, Bill McNulty, you raised your hand. Uh, uh, maybe maybe by accident. Okay, all right, let's keep Sorry. going on so we can hold holding hands for a minute. Lots of different involvement in the different communities. Um, and, and in the document, there are these um, EDA funding opportunities. So in the package that I sent, this, these links are, as you can see, I'm highlighting brings you right to them. Transportation, what can I tell you? Um, I, I, for those that have been active on the, on the um, road safety audits, I think this is the most that there's ever been. Um, and Bill McNulty and the team are really looking forward to building. Again, they start starts as of um, October 1st, the new funding round. But um, you know, the conveyor onboarding, there's um, road safety, I mean, the, um, sorry, the um, cartograph pavement management system that is new. Um, there's the transportation managers program that Charlie talks to his other colleagues across the Commonwealth. Um, there's the drone and there's, and its connection to the GIS. The active transportation study is really important in terms of where the, you know, the next steps in terms of preparing for um, the analysis of, of um, where our region is going and how we can um, identify these uh, various transportation modes. Really important uh, climate change transportation vulnerability assessment project. There will be a webinar on October 20th, right? Um, but, um, yes. But we have, but we have, we're working with um, our regional partners in MAP's um, yeah, Metropolitan Area Planning Commission, the Cape Cod Commission, as well as SERPED. Um, so rather than everybody having their own, we really, they've done a really nice job, the Transportation Department of bringing everybody together. Brockton Area Transit continues to be a very strong partner with us. Kyle's monitoring the MEPA environmental, that's just not transportation, but that is, affects all of us in the, in the, in the planning aspects. And, and again, here's the listing of the various um, 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 road safety audits um, in Bridgewater, Brockton, and East Bridgewater. The GIS, you can see this. We just had a great meeting with, with um, Andrew Vidal and um, taking us in the GIS to a whole nother level. Um, Sean continues to work on the septic management program. Um, I do want to be able to say a couple things in terms of announcements. The South Coast Rail Project, um, it continues to be where we get notification. I wanted that is in your package. And then um, for the next, for the October 7th JTC meeting, um, the a representative of MB, MBTA, actually from Keolis, will be talking about the vegetative um, management plan presentation and overview. Um, John Costa um, will be sending that out to all of our communities and um, our stakeholders. So um, just wanna thank you for bringing that topic up. Um, and so that we're following up on, on the recommendation of really having a, a good speaker. So, um, and again, this got a little bit um, miscombobulated, but that is the, um, the, the staff report. And I hope that you do take the time to review all of the amazing things that the staff is doing. Thank you, Mary, so much. Um, it's just so impressive when you go through and talk about um, all of the, the great work that you're doing. And 
we are really have, have become relevant and great partners with our communities. And it's just so exciting. So thank you all for your hard work, all your efforts. Um, we're really making a difference in our community. Uh, we've been working closely with Bill McNulty to create safety zones. He's been wonderful and a great um, source of information for all of us. Um, so, um, you know, thank you, Bill, everybody else who's working so hard to help our communities. We truly appreciate it. So thank you very much. All right, so it looks like we are on to um, uh, Joanne, who is going to be talking about um, reappointment to the to the SEDS committee. Is Joanne with us? I thought I saw her. Hey, she just came in. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. yes. Hi, okay, Joanne. Hi there. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so yes, my name is Joanne Zygmunt, the Economic um, Development and Environmental Planner at OCPC. Um, we have some exciting updates on the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee that OCPC leads as the US Economic Development Administration's Economic Development District. We had um, identified a few vacancies. Um, so we'll be coming back to you at future meetings as we discuss within the committee um, how to fill those seats and with who. But in the meantime, we're up for reappointing some members that have been longtime members of the committee. So for those of you um, who may not be familiar with the committee, you may be new to OCPC's board. The purpose of the SEDS committee is really to advise Old Colony Planning Council as we develop a five-year comprehensive economic development strategy, which is basically a regional blueprint um, for economic development collaboration across our region. Uh, so committee members are really actively involved in that process. There was a report that was um, put out. Um, it was approved by the EDA, I think, in early 2020. So that is the strategy that we're currently working with. Um, so now that it's out, the committee's role is basically to help us report and monitor progress on that regional strategy, as well as to help us um, build partnerships and collaborate in the region and build capacity too. So you may have seen some of the economic development webinars that we have been doing over the last several months. It's usually on a schedule of every other month. The committee helps us identify topics and speakers and, and design those. Um, so any, are, um, any questions about the role of the committee or, or who they are? So these um, 10 people that you see on item seven on your, um, in your packet on page four, those are folks who are up for reappointment. So um, if you have any questions about who they are or anything like that, you know, um, I'm here to answer those questions, but otherwise I think it's up to, um, to the council to, uh, to consider these reappointments. Thank you. Madam President, a um, uh, action would be required in terms of moving the slate as uh, recommended. All right. Um, I'll make a motion that um, we move the uh, the slate as recommended by Joanne for um, reappointments to the Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee. Do we have a second? A second. Okay, second. That was Becky. Um, Sandy, are you ready for a roll call vote on this um, this item? Yep. Okay. Avon. Avon. You forgot Abington. Oh, Abington. I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I couldn't let up the top. Abington. Except. <laughs> Avon. Here we go. Except. Bridgewater. Yes. Except uh, Brockton. Except. <clears throat> uh, Duxbury is vacant. Uh, East Bridgewater. Not here. Easton. Team Marie's not here yet. Uh, Halifax vacant. Hanover vacant. Hanson. Nope. Uh, Kingston. Pembroke. Except. Plymouth. Except. Plimpton. Except. Stoughton. And West Bridgewater. And Whitman. Yeah. I was going to leave Abington right out. I'm so sorry for that. Okay, we're all set. 
Great, thank you very much, thank Sandy. You. All right, Sandy, next item is yours, suicide prevention proclamation. Uh, yes, um, I wanna thank all of you for having me here this evening to present this proclamation. I know it's not a subject that most of us wanna talk about or be involved with, and just don't know what kind of questions that we need to ask when we come upon somebody who is or may be an, in danger of taking their own life. Um, a question I wanna ask just for, I throw it out there to everybody uh, when I'm teaching a class on this and I ask them, what does suicide look like? Well, I've come to the conclusion that suicide looks like me, looks like you, looks like your family members, neighbors and friends, sadly. Uh, how we recognize suicide is we have a mnemonic of QPR instead, just like CPR, they both save lives. QPR is question. Don't question somebody as if they're, you know, thinking about taking their life. Come right out and ask them, are you going to kill yourself? They usually have a plan. They've probably done it several times before and has not been successful. Um, the other one is to persuade, persuade them to not do it, maybe break the um, realm of what they're thinking in their mind and bring up something that they can think about like a, a family member or a daughter or, or something that would uh, maybe get them out of this frame of mind at the time. And R is definitely refer them somewhere where they can get help. Don't leave them, never leave them. In fact, I, you know, when I teach the classes, uh, people will say to me, oh, I can't do that. I can't ask this, you know, my family member or friend or are they, they'd hate me. They're not going to like me. They're going to be mad at me. And I always come back and tell them I'd rather have a mad friend or family member uh, or a neighbor mad at me than a dead one. And that's what it really comes down to, because at one point or in one time or another, they are going to be successful. I know I'm a survivor of suicide many times, more than what I like to be. Uh, most recently was a friend of mine, her 14 year old daughter took her own life. Uh, really weren't too many warnings, uh, but when she looked back at you know, what she had of uh, working or being with her daughter, there was some depression, there was some bullying and probably you know, times that she may wanted to have gotten help and uh, didn't. So if I'm gonna go ahead and read the proclamation. I hope you, know, you all take this serious. And I know that there are many people if you haven't experienced it at some point in your life, I hope you never do, but you may experience it. And do not be afraid. I cannot express that enough. Do not be afraid to come out and ask them the real tough questions. Are you going to kill yourself? Don't <clears throat> leave them and get them help. Whether you have to call the police or whether you have to uh, call the ambulance or whomever you need to call, but you know, you're going to save a life. It's just like somebody coming upon somebody who needs CPR and you just walk away. So uh, unfortunately, it is a conversation that needs to be done. I know that we say September is suicide um, recognition month, but, and what I've seen every month is suicide prevention. Uh, we deal with it every single day. We get phone calls all the time of somebody in the community in Plymouth County, um, I don't know why Marshfield is the highest rate of suicide. Can't figure that one out, but uh, it's just too often, especially among the young children. So I'll read the proclamation. Thank you for let, giving me that time to express my feelings. Uh, whereas suicide is the 10th leading cause of all deaths in the US and the second leading cause of death among individuals between the ages of 15 and 24. Whereas in the US, one person completes suicide every 14 minutes. Suicide is not suicide unless it's complete. Whereas it is estimated that 5 million people in the US are survivors of suicide loss. Whereas an increase in an overall suicide rate in our country was seen in 2019, representing a change in a recent pattern of stability or slight declines. And I just wanna uh, tell you something in 2019, they started recognizing that a lot of uh, motor vehicle accidents were not actually motor vehicle accidents. They were intentional suicide attempts. Whereas suicide is a community problem and thus there must be a community response through various initiatives to reduce suicide behaviors. Whereas the uh, Plymouth Suicide Prevention Coalition 
which is dedicated to reducing the frequency of suicide attempts and deaths through education, awareness, and action, uh, urge that we are a community. Women, there are more suicides among men than there are women. Men tend to complete the suicide. Women cry out. They attempt it, they try, but it's really a call for help. Number one, recognize suicide as a national, state, regional, and local public health problem and declare suicide prevention to be an old colony planning council priority and encourage local initiative based on the goals contained in the national uh, strategy uh, for suicide prevention. Therefore, it be resolved that we, the old colony planning council do hereby designate as national suicide prevention month in OCPC's region. Thank you very much. Madam President, a, um, a motion will be needed to accept the resolution. All right, um, any questions for Sandra? Um, just real quick, in the resolution, it says we designate as National Suicide Prevention Month in the region, but it doesn't say which month. Are we gonna designate September as the National Suicide Prevention Month? Well, yes. I, I believe we're recognizing uh, September as the uh, the month uh, uh, of prevention month uh, that we September is the uh, month that is uh, the national um, month. That right. Uh, just, could could I suggest that we put in the language we the old Pol Colony Planning Council do hereby designate September as National Suicide Prevention yes. Month in the OCPC's region? Yes. We can put that in. Uh, yes. Is that oh. something, Mary, you can change? I... You're muted, Mary. Yeah. I, I can um, do it. I can't do it right now, but I will have that resolution as so noted. All right. Any other suggestions? That's a good suggestion, Becky. Anything else? Okay. Can, um, would someone like to make a motion to uh, declare that uh, September will be National Suicide Prevention Month um, or that Old Colony Planning Council designates uh, September as National Suicide Prevention Month. So moved. Okay, Becky, motion, we have I'll a second. second. I'll second that. Okay, second, Stephen. All right, uh, Sandra, you ready for a roll call vote? Sure. Abington? Accept. Avon? Bridgewater, accept. Brockton? Accept. Secretary. East, oh. East Bridgewater. Oh. Hanson, I mean Easton. Halifax. Hanson. Oh. Yeah, Hanson. <coughs> Pembroke. Yes. Plymouth. Yes. Plimpton. Yes. Stoughton. West Bridgewater. Whit Whitman. What is, what is, she saying? is Whitman here? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, Sandy. It's not a, a, a pleasant or easy um, topic to talk about, but something that's very important to all of our communities. So thank you for um, bringing this forward for us to, um, to make this um, declaration. And Madam President, I'll make that change and I'll correct it and I'll send it out to all the members. Beautiful. Mary. Okay, so now we're on to the AAA review and this will be presented by David Klein. And Madam President, just for a record, I just received an email from Joe Campbell who is the delegate from Hanson um, and he had a loss in his family and apologize oh, for not coming to Sorry. All right, thank you for letting us know. David? You need to, oh, you're muted, David. Sorry, Mary, it says host disabled participant screen share. Now you're muted, Mary. David, I have the document up on the screen right now. Can you look? 
Yeah, I see it, but it's, it, I really need to be able to control it if possible. It's because I'm going to be jumping around. There you go. Thank you. Can you, can you guys see the screen? Not yet. No. No? Let me try again. Sorry. It says, still says host disabled participant screen share. Try it now, David. Okay. Thank David, a co-host. That's what I've been doing. No, it's still not working. Um, David, just let's, let's. Oh, it. here it is. Here it is. Okay. Which screen are you seeing right now? Oh, Colony Planning Council Area Agency on Aging. Thank you very much, Sandy. Okay, so um, thank you guys. Um, what this is, is a summary of the awards that we reviewed at the end of July, at the meeting at the end of July. And I thought you, I thought everyone deserved a copy of this. It wasn't completed at the time, but now it is completed. There were questions. You, um, some of you asked very good questions about the grant awards. And I didn't want to, we didn't have the time to review them and we're not, gonna, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this document either. I just wanted you to know that this is available to you, happy to send it um, if you haven't already had a chance to look at it and you can take your time and go through and, and look at the awards and what the summaries are. Um, and here's the, the total that was approved before. Um, Becky, I think you had some questions. And, and also Mary had made a suggestion that after the meeting in July, that if anybody had any questions, um, you know, to feel free to reach out to me, I'm happy to meet with you or, or talk with you. It would be handy if we could, if we could schedule it though. Um, just, just let me know. Um, moving on with this, um, I'm gonna leave the uh, Title III grant summary and move up here to, to the end of the area agency, um, the area, plan. And I want, I want to show you a little bit of our survey that we took earlier in this year, because it kind of sets up the whole area plan. So we're accessing the survey directly onto SurveyMonkey right now. And what you're looking at net right here is, is the first question. There's 22 questions. And the thing that's, to me that's striking is that the respondents who answered uh, eight, 17 percent, excuse me, let me go up, Almost 20% of them were over age 85. 60% um, of them were over age 70. And 90% of them, excuse me, 60% were over, over age 75. And 90% of the respondents were over age 65. So we had over 800 respondents to the needs assessment survey. And we really got a good turnout. About 40% of the turnout was um, through SurveyMonkey itself. The other 60% were, were uh, paper surveys that were returned, that were input into SurveyMonkey by, by Josh, our, our, our intern, um, about six months ago. Um, moving along, most of the survey questions are uh, of the nature of the, your, your, your background information. I think that where it starts to get kind of interesting is on question eight, it says, how many people are living alone? And, and it, you know, because of the age of the people that are answering, close to 50%, between 40 and 50% of the people that are responding to the survey are, are, are living alone. And what tends to happen when you're living alone is that there's, there's nobody to turn to to help, have, to help you in, unless your, your children or friends happen to live close by. So this is showing that of the people who are receiving care, um, there's about almost 20% of people from amongst the respondents that are receiving care, 18%. And we're gonna be posting this on the, on the uh, OCPC website on the AAA page. So there'll be plenty of time to review it, um, but also you can review the answers um, just by going to the link that's provided at the very end of the area plan. Um, and before I leave here, I just wanna to go to one set of questions. Um, <clears throat> And this is, this question number 19 is very important to us. It's, did you need any help with any of the following things? And you can see, unfortunately, as kind of Sandy was mentioning, there are people that are coping with um, things that are bothering them. So a lot of people were having issues with 
coping with anxiety, having confusion, coping with depression, or you know, in this case with this age group, coping with meta, meta, excuse me, memory loss. So I, I wanna point those th four things out because together they, um, they encompass almost 50% of the answers um, of what people feel they, they need help with on the survey. So, did I lose what just happened? Uh, Don't exit out of Zoom. Okay. So I want to. Um, I want to bring up the um, one second. It's coming up. Yep. Sorry about that. Here we go. All right, so here we are at the, the beginning of the um, area plan. And I'm pointing out that um, it's a four year plan. Um, we're, in a, we're in 2021, but this is the plan for, um, for, the, for the AAA for 2022 through 2025. Uh, here's our table of contents. This is gonna be posted to the website as well. So there'll be plenty of time to review, but I think it's a decent document. Um, most of it is really focused on the things that um, the things that you saw in the survey that people were responding to that they need help with. So that that will encompass the goals that we have as an organization and as a AAA organization. Um, I want to give a big thank you and shout out to to Andrew Vidal for for his excellent map work. I think we probably I think it's fair to say that we have the best map making of any of the AAAs because we're the only uh, regional planning agency, so we have that capability. But um, you, you, everyone, you might find this interesting. This is our AAA catchment area in the white, and the surrounding areas are labeled by the other AAAs. Um, and to, to take a more bird's eye view, um, we have this map in a couple of different spots in our offices, this state map. Um, and this is, so here, here, here's our AAA catchment area. And the other areas that you see sectioned off are the other uh, regional um, regions that have triple A's. I didn't know that that would be interesting to everybody, but I, I, it was. It's, we have much better maps than the typical triple A does. Does um, focusing on the on what we were just talking about in the um, in the needs assessment. Um, here are the total, this is a summary. There's an executive summary here that's a couple pages and then it's a more full version in the following pages. So the needs assessment was asking for the top five, um, um, in, in the area plan, they were asking for the top five responses on the needs assessment. And our needs assessment, because there were so many questions was really kind of um, a varied. But what I did was I, I, I took a combination of the answers on anxiety, depression, confusion, and memory loss, and included them under mental health. Um, the second, so as a whole, that's the biggest category. If you had to go, um, you know, typically transportation had shown up at, at, in the area plans as the number one category. But I think as a whole, social isolation and mental health um, ha have kind of risen to the top. And it may be because the survey occurred during, you know, during COVID, during the pandemic. So I think that was accentuated. However, I think because people are living longer, we're seeing this anyway, even without the, the pandemic. The pandemic, I think, just accentuated things. Um, not maybe not too surprisingly, too. What's crept up in our um, needs assessment was the INR, which is the information and referral aspect of what people need help with. So they need help with filling out benefit forms. Um, legal assistance, long-term care, in-home services, and caregiving information. And so this all culminates in what our, our area plan goals are for the region. And these are listed not in any particular order, 
They're just listed as what our overall goals are for the next four years. Um, this list does not really vary all that much. Um, I think it just changes in minor ways. But I think a big thing is, again, is this mental health and reduction of social isolation uh, as people get older. Uh, what else can I show you guys? I think the sources of comparative data are, are, are interesting because this is showing that um, our needs assessment, this is the age group respondents on our needs assessment. And over to the right, you have the, the state trend on needs assessment. So what's fascinating about it, to me at least, is that the age group responses between us, between the old colony region and the uh, state call trends for information and referral are really remarkably close to one another. So I think that's somewhat of a validation of the process. Um, another thing that the, the, the state asked us to find comparative um, indexes to, to measure our results against. And um, what I found was something in the, that we see a lot in the elder service industry, it, I shouldn't say in the industry, but that UMass Boston Center for Social and Demographic Research on Aging about five or six years ago, I think it was 2016, created what's known in, known nationally now as the elder index. I mean, say that nationally because UMass Boston is really the, the, the purveyor of this elder index, which is a tool that was developed uh, here in Boston, which measures the uh, adequacy of retirement income versus the, um, the living expenses that you need all across the country. It's, it's like the census. You can look, you can go onto this index and look county by county in any state in the country and see what the living expense expenses are um, and the expenses versus the income. And so it turns out, the interesting thing about the survey is that we have a high, higher level of income than, than many states, but our expenses overall are the highest in the nation. Our state is the highest in the nation in terms of older expenses, expenses for older adults. So a little bit sobering. I mean, it's, it's mainly due to uh, ha probably not uh, understandably, it's somewhat due to the housing costs here in Massachusetts. Although New York, New Jersey, um, certain states follow very closely behind. So we're, it's not like we're in an island with that. Um, so anyway, uh, feel free to uh, read this on your own, uh, ask questions. Uh, I, I have to admit that a lot of it um, was standing on the shoulders of giants, in this case, uh, the giant being Patrick Hamilton, my predecessor, who, who has answered the area, who's written the area plan numerous times during his career. And um, I just tried to not get rid of the good information he had, but just kind of update it. And, um, and, and, and that's how, that, that was the methodology between, in, in terms of writing this, um, this document. Um, it's, oh, there's a lot of attachments. The attachments in the back ask us to answer questions, um, which for me was, was a real challenge this first time around. I, I imagine it'll be much easier next time, uh, three or four years from now. Um, and here is the page where Mary and where Christine signed, okaying the um, affirming that we as a triple A will do what we say we're gonna do. So good job, Mary and Christine. David, and, you're, gonna uh, need a, you're gonna need a vote on um, both of these or just one of them? I really, I think we did vote for the, um, the grants, the grant awards in, in late July. So I, I mean, I wouldn't mind a vote, but it, but, but it would be a duplicative vote. The figure did change by $200, but you know, in, in the scheme of 1.3 million, whatever, 1.5 million, it's, it's Pretty much the same. Sorry, but I the thought, area plan. I thought I you said add. you need. Yeah, you need a you need a vote on the area plan. I would really like a vote on the area plan because this is the completed area plan. What we voted on in July were just the focal areas. Any questions for um, David on um, the report, the the area plan? <laughs> Page 
John, it was really hard to hear what uh, your question was. I'm, I'm sorry, John. Could you repeat your question, maybe? Mary, she said this up here. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is a little better. Oh, oh I can't hear. I can I can hear you I can hear you saying something but I can't really make out what yeah. you're trying what you're saying. It's hard to make I, out. Oh, that's I can hear Steve. Yeah. <laughs> okay, test one two three. That was better. That was better. <laughs> can we just go to page five? Sure. On the area plan, goals and objectives. Yep. Um. The topics, supportive community services to targeted populations. Yep. Can you buy in that on what that means? Sure. So um, there's a couple, um, as, as, you, as, as the council members may know, and I have to say that when I was a council member, I didn't completely understand this, but a lot of the, a lot of the Older Americans Act money that comes in, it's a good chunk of money. It's about one and a half and this is not counting the CARES Act or the American Rescue Plan Act money, but just the standard money that comes in from year to year is around a one and a half million dollars. But most of that money is encumbered in certain categories. And so one of the categories, Title Three b is supportive community services to targeted populations. And that's actually, it's, it's interesting that you ask about that, John, because that's actually the area that we're providing the grants, those those grants that were that we are on the summary at the end are the Title Three B grants um, providing those supportive services. So, you know, some of it is going to BAMSI, some of it is going to organizations that do outreach like Catholic Charities. Um, uh, Thirty percent of it is going to legal services through South Coastal County Legal Services. But seven of the awards, relatively smaller awards, were to the local COAs, the Councils on Aging. Um, so it's it's a it's the most general pop um, category that we have, and the targeted populations um, mean older older adults, for, um, especially um, low income older adults, and especially especially minority low income older adults. Okay, thank you, David. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Good John. Questions. All right. Thanks, Any John. other questions for David? Oh. All right. Do we have a motion to approve the final version of the OCPC AAA 2022 to 2025 area plan? Motion to approve the 2022-2025. All right. Thank area you, plan Sydney. On aging. All right, so we have a motion, Sydney. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Sandra. Sandra, are you ready for roll call vote? Sure am. All Ab right. Abington. Accept. Avon. Accept. Bridgewater. Accept. Brockton. Accept. Duxbury. East Bridgewater. Easton. Halifax. Hanover. Hanson. Kingston. Pembroke. Becky had to leave. Okay. Plymouth. Accept. Plimpton. Accept. Stoughton. West Bridgewater. And Whitman. Accept. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sandra. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thanks for all your hard work. Um, it's an excellent document. We appreciate you. Um, incorporating the suggestions that, um, that Becky and others had into the final document. So thank you very much. Thanks, Christine. All right, um, next we're on to, um, back to Mary for status on the retirement legislation. I will be quick at this. Um, we continue to work with um, Senator Michael Brady 
Um, he was, um, he had actually called us this week, um, trying to get the corrective legislation out of committee. Um, they looked like there was a little bit of a hiccup, but we are continuing to work with him and um, keep your fingers crossed that we can get a favorable report. So um, that's the status quo for that. All right, thank you. All right, um, so we're on to suggestions for future meeting agenda items. Um, I'll share that uh, we have the next finance committee meeting. We'll be talking about um, the creation of financial policies or, or a financial policy to talk about investments and other finances um, for um, OCPC. Uh, that these are open meetings. Anyone's welcome to attend. Uh, Bob Morin, we're planning on meeting with Bob, who will be sharing um, like a preview or actually kind of a, a dry run through the um, his uh, report on the um, the three investment options for our OPEB, the state plan, um, the Plymouth County and Rockland Trust where the money is now. Uh, as um, Brenda indicated uh, in her report, it's a lot of money. We're up to $904,000. So it's a good um, a chunk of change that um, we're talking about. Uh, so Bob will be hopefully meeting with us in October, um, but the first run will be at uh, the um, financial uh, meeting on the Tuesday prior. Um, I think that's all that um, that I've got. Does anyone have any suggestions for something they'd like to discuss at a future uh, on a future agenda? And Madam President, I have highlighted um, the uh, the MPO and Charlie's going to speak on that. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, every year, the OCPC is responsible for electing a local signatory to the Old Colony MPO. And every other year, it's an opportunity to elect a member to represent the communities with a population over 15,000. So what staff did in recent weeks was sent out correspondence to the eligible select boards and uh, town councils. and. Uh, we're in the process of receiving nomination forms. So this will be an action item on your agenda for the October 27th meeting. And uh, we will have a, a ballot in a poll through the virtual meeting uh, option here. And the eligible communities uh, are Abington, Bridgewater, Duxbury, Easton, Pembroke, Stoughton, and Whitman. I note that the current seat on the MPO for the communities over 15,000 is represented by the town of Whitman and it's vice chair of their board of selectmen, Daniel Salvucci. But this will, we're looking back in time, we've been actually conducting this election process since uh, 2002. So we're going on 19 years of doing this uh, election process for the MPOs. Great, thanks Charlie. So that will be on um, the October agenda as well. Any other suggestions? Someone over either Fred, um, Preston, John, or Frank. I can't stand I can't by here them. <laughs> Usually picks up. I know. It's, 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 no, 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 it's not you. It's it's really hear him. Sorry, this is supposed to be picking up. One, two, three, one, two, three. We can hear you, Mary. I think he just has to be closer to it. Okay, here, I'm moving. Here we go. Uh, Madam Chairperson, a few years back, we discussed about calling the mayor's office about uh, the road from uh, across the street from Cardinal Cushing over to the Avon line. It's so poorly. Uh, Todd. Well, now Avon has tied that road there, but through that um, section, 
uh, our ambulances and all the other ambulances, which is Randolph and Stoughton, uh, if they're coming from that side of town, they have to stop almost and go very slow. I would like to see us in around November or January uh, have somebody from Mayor Sullivan's office. Uh, Avon has now paved that road and it's very poor driving. And I, I, I don't want to be the one that they lose going over that road because they've taken two time, you know, but I'd like us to see if we could get a hold of somebody's in the mayor's office and do something about it. Uh, All you, right. Are you referring to South Street? Reservoir Street. Reservoir. Oh. So, so Sydney Marrow, who is our delegate, <laughs> is also the chief of staff to Mayor Sullivan. Uh, just a suggestion, Mary. I, you know, we we have discussed it at several meetings, but because of Capitol's <laughs> passing, and uh, we've never been able to get back to uh, the new mayor. And I thought maybe somebody here might know uh, somebody on his staff that could at least maybe answer a few questions. Because if you question the uh, the medics. They'll tell you that road is does more harm than it does good for the people in the ambulance. Uh, they can't administer anything. They have to stop and pull over. And I just think, you know, there, there are a lot of us uh, who are, uh, are directly affected by that. And uh, I would just like to see if it's possible to get somebody from his office to talk to. I'll be happy to be that somebody. Who said yeah. that? <laughs> Can he Frank, hear me? Oh. Frank, you're in luck because I was going to say <laughs> congratulations to Sydney for her appointment as chief of staff to Mayor Sullivan. So you have a connection right here on the council. So she's gonna, Sydney said she would look into it and um, and coordinate probably with um, with Mary about a time to, to talk about it. That's a I think, Cindy, if you go down there in a car, you will understand what the <laughs> medics who are in those ambulances from the Brockton Road down, they can't administer anything. Okay. So, you know, I'm just saying, they, mm -hmm. they've got to be careful, and I think the mayor is on the right track, and I would just like to see if we could get him to help us. I, I will make sure to address it tomorrow with him and the DPW. Um, the uh, and it's reservoir reservoir road. Okay, because I know. Okay, I, I got it. And Sydney, um, Charlie can provide some background about that. I know it's been an ongoing, so we can prep you um, to prep the mayor oh, and have wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you. Appreciate Great. it. Thank you, Sydney. And, Absolutely. Um, <laughs> thank you, Frank, for sharing that. All right. Any other suggestions? Okay, hearing none, seeing no hands. All right, so our next meeting will be October 27th at 6 p.m. The finance meeting will be on October 26th at, um, those are typically, I think, 5.45 right. p.m. Mary will send out um, the invitation, so anyone is welcome to join us. So um, uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, very good meeting, lots of uh, good information uh, was discussed. Um, whoops. I lost you there. Okay, so um, uh, motion to adjourn. Do we have a uh, second? Yeah, I second. All right, second, Stephen. All right, raise your hands. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right, good night, everyone. Have a good, good night. night. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. Everyone be you. well. Good night. You